between both places since 2014, and uh, this is my studio. My story with this building is that uh, I moved here after school at NASCAD because I had this space available to me um, to work in. I live upstairs. I decided to basically do my first two years of undergrad here so I could make a lot of bad work and get it through my system. We've been slowly renovating this space. The history of this building is that it's, you know, it was a school and then artists took it over and it was studios for a really long time. I think at some point it might have been struts, I think, for a very short time. Uh, and then, and since then, it's just been um, sort of live workspace. My practice exists between painting and installation. I'm using painting and the language of painting, its history, to recontextualize personal narrative. Um, I'm like, I guess, because I just hate saying, you know what it is right now? It's like I don't like, like referencing the history of painting. Like I don't even like saying it that it's something that I use. So it's almost like, I like to think about it as like, I'm recontextualizing um, sort of contemporary culture um, within the framework of painted histories. And I'm starting with digital drawings and then creating paintings based on these digital drawings and in a very physical way. So then the paintings um, end up with this very tactile, and I'm making very, like a very tactile quality and I'm making them in like a very traditional way and I'm actually finding as time progresses I'm getting more and more traditional in my technique with these works. So they're getting almost further and further away from like the digital drawings and thumbnails. I'm creating digital thumbnails with a tablet and as you know, that's like kind of where I can figure out palette and composition and maybe some of the more formal qualities. And then once I get to the painting, um, a lot can change. Um, that's also like where I'm starting to maybe play more with like light and sculptural qualities through the paint and what the material can actually do. So now really trying to not address the digital almost in a way, but I do think that elements come through in terms of color and even the drawings and the composition. Um, when you're digitally drawing, I find that things get really simplified. My practice both honors painting and, and the canon of painting, and I love it as a tech, like I love doing it, I love making paintings, I love looking at paintings, consuming them, but I'm also very skeptical of this history and feel that my place as an artist is almost rewriting that history. Um, and sometimes, you know, there might be notes of skepticism in there, but for the most part, um, I do love it. Like, I love the traditions. Uh, I just maybe don't love everything that makes up that history. And thinking about also what has been left out of that history and how I now can, like, almost reinsert elements into histories. So my name is John Haney and I am, I tell, what do I tell people? Um, that I'm a photographer. Trained as a, an old-fashioned darkroom analog photographer and that uh, my practice is much more diverse, although that's, I feel like that's the, the essence of that medium is kind of at my core. But about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I got into sculpture uh, because I've always been very interested in tactility and process and the substance of, of things. Uh, and then that kind of evolved more into kind of dealing with space and landscape. So I live in Wood Point, New Brunswick, uh, which is about seven minutes outside of Sackville uh, on the Cumberland Basin, which is on the upper reaches of the Bay of Fundy. We were living in Hamilton, Ontario for eight years, where I had a more conventional studio practice. We had the opportunity uh, at the time, my wife and I, to buy this piece of land in this old farmhouse here in Wood Point. And I had been sniffing around at it for about eight years, this particular place. 
and had to convince an old man to sell it to us. Uh, and it was a long courtship, but eventually uh, I was able to charm him and we were able to buy this piece of land. My studio is still, for the most part, in boxes, uh, in two and a half rooms downstairs. Uh, I bleed things out of those boxes as I need them. If I need a tool or a collection of broken mirror glass that I remember is in a bag that says broken mirror glass, um, I, can, I can find it probably in five minutes. Uh, so yes, I tend to be a little bit of a, well, I, I think collector because that, I don't think, uh, hoarder doesn't really, uh, I think they're beautiful things that I collect. A little bit of a magpie, so I had a lot of stuff. Two years ago, 2018, um, at the Art Gallery of Hamilton, uh, the project was called Thanatos, and it, it, was, about, it was about the entirety of human history <laughs> and, uh, and, and our sort of compulsive death drive as, as societies and, and, and our addiction to oil and American history and blah, blah, blah. I could go on for like 10 hours about this, but the, the final, the, pro, the, 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 the actual object which all of this was embodied in was uh, a 1973 Cadillac Eldorado coupe, which I gold leafed the whole thing. I've never cared for gold that much, particularly. I like silver, let's say. Um, but as soon as I discovered that I couldn't use imitation gold leaf or even uh, like 23 karat, it had to be pure. Like it had to be total. I had to go whole hog. And all of a sudden I realized, whoa, like this is what people have been killing each other. People, human, humans have been murdering each other for this for thousands of years because of this, you know. And uh, that project also left me with a lot of extra 24 karat gold leaf. And so I've been like using it for things and it's in a lot of the pieces in here right now. This particular piece behind you is a gold, it's, it's gold uh, text on a painted red background, kind of a livid red, which suggests uh, blood and lust. And it's supposed to be, um, so I haven't, have I come up with a, a name for this project yet? There's going to be 12 of them. They're all quotations from hockey press conferences. This one says, we were a little disconnected tonight. There was one that said, uh, we, tonight we really got the short end. Yeah, like all these things that were like about hockey, but they were about, you know, it could have been a relationship or anything. And I started writing them down. And I wanted, it. so I, I got 12 of these panels, 12 because there's six hockey players on the ice on, on each team. So I got these ideas about how this will work conceptually on the wall and they'd, they'd be kind of the way they'll be juxtaposed. And so there were, that, that, series and then I'm working on this series called The Garden which is simply my life in this place. They're large format um, film, 4x5 color photographs of my family, the landscape, the architecture of this place. And <clears throat> what else? So yeah, t-shirts. So it's all kind of exploded a little bit and, and my life has become my studio, my studio has become my life, and my life has become my work in more, in more, in more of a way than it ever was before. So I'm now just letting that happen. And it's, it's, it's really, it's terrifying, but it's really kind of exciting too. My name is Graham Patterson and uh, we're in my studio right now. Uh, this is the garage portion of my uh, uh, studio space. Um, it's one of the bigger studio spaces here. I also have a studio space in my home which is right next door. Um, I'm on the corner uh, of a, kind of a rural area here. Uh, I also have a barn where I store some of my crates and uh, other junk. Um, there's a studio space upstairs where I have some pieces and more junk. Uh, my practice uh, primarily consists of uh, working with animation and sculpture, but it also includes robotics and sound, performance, 
Um, my main concerns are mostly with uh, human to human or human and animal relationships and kind of observations and life experiences uh, that I try to mix into narratives. Um, so essentially I'm telling stories, but uh, through, through many different mediums and, and, and different uh, processes. So that the house project here, uh, it's, uh, it's a one to 10 scale uh, model of my, my house, a house I've been living in for the past 10, 11 years. And uh, a couple years ago, uh, it really dawned on me how long I've lived there and how much it's become a part of me and my life and how I attached I am to it. And there, there's scary parts of that and there's really kind of, uh, there's good feelings also. It, it protects me, it, you know, it's a roof over my head. Uh, I'm a happy homeowner, but it's also in, in ways kind of a weird prison uh, in, in abstract ways. And uh, this is why I started the project. I wanted to make a, a model of the house and really uh, take a lot of care in the details. One of the big parts of this project is, is um, doing something I had never done before. So working with virtual reality, but also allowing the viewer to walk inside my model. I've always tried to create that in some way, but it's, 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 it's uh, this, the, the technology that, that exists today gave me this opportunity. Usually my work it has to do with memory. It has to do with storytelling through memory. This is not memory. This is just the way things are. It's an observation. Um, it's like some of the other works here, the, the trailer that's that's behind you, or even this this billboard. They're they're these just observations, um, the way things are right now. Um, and so the house that I've made, the details in there are the the way the colors of the wall, the way the furniture is. Things have changed since. <laughs> so this is the way things were two years ago in that house, and so I'm really trying to focus in on that. Uh, that feeling I had at that time, which wasn't a memory, it was the way things are, and then kind of working with that, and then the, the narrative that will be built into this project has more to do with just those feelings, and a lot of those feelings are very abstract, and so <laughs> the way things, the way I will animate things and the way I'll bring uh, the narrative together uh, won't be linear, it's going to move all over the place, and um, I hopefully will make it so that each viewer will get their own experience. There's, there's many different stories, I guess. My work within the past few years, uh, something I've been really trying to, to push and to discover and to experiment with is allowing viewers to get individual experiences. Um, almost putting a bit of chaos into my work. Um, there's no one story to be told. They're all in different stories. They're all different paths you can take. Kind of choose your own adventure um, uh, type thing. And so with this work, it's, it's probably the, the furthest I've gone with that, with that idea, with that process. Mm -hmm.